Sunday Edward Mazak. <laughs> if you see that name, it's, I think it's Polish, is it not? Stanley is a multi-passionate creator and a holder of space. He's a performer at heart. He often serves as a speaker, trainer, writer, and a coach. His work has been greatly impacted by his long journey out of by his long journey out of destructive experiences and fundamentalist religion, acceptance of his gay and gender nonconforming identity, and by his military service. Stanley recently retired from the US military after 21 plus years in the Army Reserve, where they had multiple stateside mobilization overseas and combat zone tours beginning on 9-11, and completed in 2022. Having served in military police, public affairs, broadcast journalism, and as a military equal opportunity advisor and organization climate specialist. In his newfound retirement, Stanley is focused on speaking, performing, writing, coaching, while being a perpetual student of spirituality and serving as our current president of the board of directors here at the Metaphysical Chapel of Life. So I give you our speaker today, Stanley Edward Mason. Thank you, Reverend Betty. Appreciate that. It's good to be with you all today virtually. I'm so grateful for the technology that we have today. And um, <laughs> today I want to talk a little bit about recalibration recalibration. Um, today, uh, in the quantum human design modality, the sun is moving into the gate 39, which in that place is called the gate of recalibration. And uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about that today. What it invites us to do, among some other things, is to allow some recalibrating in areas of our lives, which might need some. And we'll have kind of this extra energy in this space for the next week or so. So we can ask ourselves, Things like, are there areas where our life is asking for that shift or that change? Are there areas where we've lost faith in some place? Are we experiencing lack of some kind? Uh, do I trust my relationship with myself, my soul, and source as I'm creating my life and experiencing what I want to create? Am I embodying the, the gratitude and honoring the collaborative nature of my relationship with God, with all that is? Am I remembering the power that I have to create abundance in my life in all of its different areas, mind, body, spirit, finances, heart, emotions, creativity, creative expression, and love? If there are areas of my life that are asking for recalibration, what are they? Have I given those areas the attention that they might be gently nudging me asking for, or in some cases, maybe not so gently nudging and asking me for? Are there parts of my life that are on autopilot, but maybe with some old programming and old autopilot system that I've outgrown and my soul is calling me forward into this new way of being? Last night, I was playing a, a dice game with my brother and my partner, Shreyas. My brother's name is Phil. Um, and I, I don't often play dice games. It's been a while. You know, sometimes growing up, we'd play Yahtzee. Last night, we were playing Farkle, you know, just different, different games with dice, right? Um, but in most of these games, you've had you have one set of dice and you roll the dice and you play your turn and then you kind of pass it to the next person and they do the same thing and round and round and round the table it goes right. I mean that's at least the way I've always played it. Um, it's e again even though I don't often play that's just how it happens when I play. But last night during the game, my brother decided he wanted a different set of dice. He didn't like how the dice were spinning on the table and he wanted a different set. So he like sorted through all of his games to find other games that had dice. And we ended up with three sets of dice. There were three of us. So we were each playing with our own set of dice by this point. Now, I know this wouldn't fly in Vegas, but it was fine for our little you know, family game night last night. So since we had our own sets of dice, there was absolutely zero need for me to collect my dice at the end of my round and slide them over to the next person, which was Shreyas. There's zero need for that. In fact, when I did that, because I kept doing, I was doing it, it was just kind of disruptive because I'd slide them over and then I realized, oh, I don't need to do that. And I'd pull them back and then Shreyas would throw his dice. But every single time after I was done with my turn, I would grab my dice and slide them over to Shreyas. Every time, even though there was no need for it. 
And every time I'd be like, ah, why am I keeping continuing to do this, even though there's no need for that? And my brother and my partner would just laugh and we joke about it, but we talk about it every time between every turn and we would just laugh about it. But my brain in its neurological autopilot would automatically without question, force my hands to the dice to slide them over to the next person to start the next round, even though there was no need. So we, with laughter growing every time, my own just frustration, like funny frustration, not like a you know negative frustration, but my own frustration and disbelief growing every time that I this was completely, I had no control over this. And so every time we would joke in between and it probably about 7,413 rounds later when we finished this game after I'd done this 7,413 times of moving this dice for no reason, being frustrated, it just gave me this thing to, to remind myself and think about. So I was thinking about the gate 39 this morning, this gate of recalibration. As our, our game night came to an end, I was just wondering what other areas of my life might be on autopilot? that I might not even notice right now. You know, if, if we, if I hadn't been, if we hadn't been doing the same thing over and over and over again, would I have even really cared or noticed? And I wonder what things might be going on in my life that maybe I don't do repetitively over and over and over again, but that might just be on autopilot. That's not a super supportive thing for me. So our brains, we know, are very powerful organs. They, they can do so much for us and can take so much direction from us too. We're inundated with bits of information around us all the time from inside of our bodies, from our bodies experiencing the world around us. In fact, it's said that our bodies take in about 11 million bits of information per second. 11 million bits of information our bodies take in and send to our brains every second of every day. The only problem, though, is that our conscious mind can only process about 50 bits of information per second. So we're getting 11 million, but our conscious mind can only process 50. So what happens to all those millions of other bits of information? Well, they get put on autopilot. Our brain is capable of saying, well, you don't really need to do this right now. You've done this in the past. I know what to do. So here's a shortcut. So you don't have to think about this anymore because you have, you want to focus on these other 50 bits of information. But if we don't bring our conscious effort, our conscious awareness into that process, sometimes the shortcuts that our brain makes for us can be unsupportive. So this week, as we're thinking about this idea of recalibration, is there some area of my life that feels tight or constricting? Maybe it's a fun thing like a game and I'm just like, oh, I know if I would step back and be really focused on that and say, okay, I'm going to consciously remember that I'm not going to slide the dice from here to here. And that's the only thing I'm going to focus on for the next minute and a half to make sure that it happens. I bring that conscious intentionality to that process. Maybe after several rounds of doing that, that wiring would shift in my brain. That neural pathway might start to smooth out in a way that's more supportive for what I want to do. But it would take that time and that conscious effort. So obviously I'm not going to spend that on rolling dice, right? But I want to ask myself during this week where the gate 39 of recalibration is highlighted and I have this kind of extra boost of energy there to, to consider these questions. Is there some area that feels tight or constricting? Is there an area of my life or experience that's causing stress or anxiety? Is it something, especially since the gate 39 resides in, in the root center, you know, related to the root chakra, is there something that's impacting my roots or my foundations, my relationship with money or creativity or abundance in some area that doesn't feel super abundant and flowy right now? Is there some space where, because this root center energy also has a lot to do with timing, is there some place I'm feeling rushed or behind? Or is there something I'm feeling like things just aren't happening as fast as I want them to happen on the other end of that spectrum? There's an opportunity here to move from that space of constriction or tightness to just exhaling and release and expansion into this new vision of what I have for my, for my life and experience. I can have an opportunity to go from heaviness to lightness and ease. So is there a possible invitation to reconnect with source, whether in a way that I used to connect with source, spirit, God, whatever you want to call it, and I've just kind of let fall by the wayside, and I want to go, I feel compelled to go back to that because I know it was nourishing for me. 
Am I feeling called towards that as a way of helping recalibrate myself back into being centered and aligned? Or maybe there's a new way sources inviting me to connect, a new way that would be fun and exciting for me to tap back in, whether meditation, journaling, dancing, art, whatever it is. Is there an invitation there? Is that my invitation to recalibration this week? To be able to connect with source, with your higher self, with your inner wisdom, and to also connect with the higher wisdom of whatever that situation is. Because even if something is in shadow, or even if something is seemingly negatively impacting us at a particular point in time, even that thing, that situation has its own higher wisdom that we can also connect into and say, what is the expansive way forward for me? How can I recalibrate my connection supportively from a situation of lack to one of abundance or expansion? How can I recalibrate both my perception of the experience to get it into a higher vibrational state to then change it? And then also at the same time, shift the experience and recalibrate the experience itself to be more expansive. All of these can play together and go hand in hand. And all of this can be happening in one area of our lives and not another, or in multiple areas within myself, spiritually, physical body, situations that I'm in, relationship with others, relationship with society, or even society itself, its systems and structures. So what is asking for our recalibration? I feel like there's a lot in our world that's asking for it right now, from the way that we celebrate and understand our history from a place of excluding the marginalized and honoring the contributions of people throughout all of our history to making sure that all the tables that we create are expansive enough to include everybody with an equitable seat at the table, to make sure that we are all having the same freedom to connect with self, soul, and source in each other, to make sure that we're looking around at the world around us and taking care of our earth and the planet beneath us, and the trees, and the air, and the skies, and the birds, and the animals all around us, all honoring all the energy that creates our experience together. All of this, I think, is asking for some sort, some form of recalibration. So to do this, we're invited, especially this week, because we have a little bit of extra energy behind us, and with the full moon tomorrow night too, which I'll hit on in just a moment, just to consider how I can engage with a deeper understanding of my faith that is recalibrated more to bringing myself back into an even more uh, inclusive sense of alignment, to connect with source within me, because source is within me and around me, deepening my trust, knowing that we are all expressions of that same source, infinitely connected to all the energy and unconditional love that's inherent in all of that, the deepening connection with my own gratitude, remembering that gratitude sets my my vision and my energy on those things that I'm grateful for that I can see coming in and honoring me and nourishing me and supporting me so I can create more of that. Remembering all the ways I've been supported in the past and have already co-created and succeeded and created in the past. To ask and consider how I might be able to do or to embody all of this energy of gratitude and faith and appreciation so that I can take those aligned actions in that energy and transmute whatever experiences might be showing me something that's not that. Both internally, inside of myself, externally, with the room and the things and the people and communities around me, being able to recalibrate the parts of my experience into greater alignment with our highest good and the highest good of all and harm to none, because we can affirm and believe and live into the energy and idea that we can create an abundant experience for every single person on this planet that doesn't harm others. There's this false dichotomy that it's one or the other, this or that, and it's not true. We can create with all of us moving forward together, all of us experiencing the same abundance and love and expansion and opportunities to connect. And if we fix ourselves on that vision, continue to create visions that support that, that's what we will start to create even more of. And it's a perfect time to think about this and do that this week as the full moon tomorrow night um, highlights the gate 38, which is the gate of the visionary in quantum human design. So with that, I'll leave you with one final question today. How am I ready to recalibrate my experience to come into even more alignment with the highest vision for my life, for my relationships, and for my creative expression as I'm ready for that to ripple out and positively impact all the people around me?
It was a long question, so I'll say it one more time. How am I ready now to recalibrate my experience to come into even more alignment with the highest vision for my life, my relationships, and my own creative expression as that creates those ripples and positively impacts the world around me in infinite ways? I'll leave you with that today.